Hi, the hope you one. My name is Mr. Fruit, and welcome to Gwent. That's right. If you know Witcher, it's that card game from Witcher Three, or rather, Witcher Three is the game inside of Gwent. Because let's be real, that's that's all I did. I played this when it first came out, like early access or like beta, over three years ago. I want to say, or about three years ago, and it was completely different. But the other day, I saw a tournament was going on. I clicked on it, and I was like, "What the heck? This doesn't look anything like I remember." So I fired it up, and lo and behold, now I'm addicted. And I know what you're thinking. Oh my god. It comes another Mr. Fruit video with some obscure game with some genre that doesn't relate at all to his widespread audience. And so because of that, it's going to underperform, but he's going to do it anyway because he enjoys it. And sometimes he just wants to make videos on things he enjoys. And so that's what he's going to do. And so hopefully we're going to sit here and watch it. Anyway, hey, I got new glasses. Uh, one of two new pairs I got. These actually have the blue light filter in them. We're going to immediately hop into a game. And as it is with almost all the games, new games I do. I'm going to walk you through it as we play, as if a card game isn't hard enough, especially they don't give you a lot of time to think. And me being new to the game, too, and my deck being pretty combo-oriented stuff, it's like, ah, eh, eh. so let's see how it goes. I've also seen some clips of people watching my videos, and I notice if you're watching this, uh, say, tickle my pickle. Really, that's the one- that's the only thing I could come up with? Put that in the comment section. Because I know some people will be like, oh, okay, I just want- Five minutes into the video, so I'm like, wait, why do I make all these intros? If no one watches them. I don't know how many people watch them. Anyway, we need to do some redraws. What am I up against? Uh, Nilfgaard or whatever the fudge they are. So I need to make sure- first round, I want to go in pretty hard here. I don't want that in my deck. And I don't want that in my deck. Or rather, in my hand. And... I don't want- that my hand either. Okay, that's a pretty good start. All right, I'm not too upset about it. I go first, so let me play a card, and then I'll walk you through what the heck is happening. Although I'm not sure they could lock me here pretty easily. So I'll do something pretty neutral here. Draw a card, discard a card. And which card do we want to discard? We just want to thin our deck here. I'm gonna get rid of you. And end our turn. Okay, so while they're taking their turn, let me do this real quick. There are two rows in Gwent. There used to be three, and in Witcher 3, you would notice there were three. There were like soldier, range, trebuchet, or whatever the fudge. Now there's just melee and ranged, and it doesn't go based on points in each row, it's total points. Long story short, the way you win the game is at the end of the round, you have the most power between all your units in both rows. So you'll see here right now, he's technically winning five to four, right? And now if I were to pass, he would just win. It's best of three. And so I'm going to do my best as we go to kind of walk you through this. I don't know what this does. Formation, if played on the melee row, he didn't. Okay. Order, damage unit by one, charge one, resupply whenever you play a warfare card. Okay, so he's just going to keep chipping away at us. That is a little annoying. So I am just going to play another one of these. Oh, Look at this combo. So we drew this card, but I have to discard a card. But if I discard this card, it goes to my graveyard. But if it goes, if it's discarded during a turn, it summons from my graveyard to the melee row. I know, crazy. I'm going to be trying to get through a lot of stuff here real quick. So it's a lot about back and forth. You each take one turn playing a card. If you don't play a card, you can pass. But then you're not able to play anything else in that round. So like I could pass here because I'm up. But then he could foreseeably only have to play like one card, be up, and then pass. You start your turn one, or round one, with ten cards. And then if it goes to a round, well, it will go to a round two. Round two, you draw three cards. And then round three, if it goes to round three, you draw another three cards, because it's best of three. Um, and you'll see all my cards are animated. This is actually, it might sound really stupid, but this is the reason I wanted to play. Because I was watching the stream, and all the cards were animated. I was like, this is so sick. Like, look at this. They all have their own animations and music and stuff when you click on them and it looks cool on the board. So, yeah, it's pretty stupid, but that's literally why I wanted to play. Um, so give one charge to an allied unit. Boost an allied unit. Okay, so he boosted. Okay. Aye, aye, aye. Alright, so... How many cards are in my hand? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Perfect. I'm gonna continue to thin my deck. So I'm gonna play this again in the melee row. Sometimes it matters, sometimes it doesn't. Ah, that sucks, because I want that to be in my... in my deck. 
Uh, fudge. Yeah, I'm gonna have to get rid of... Ugh, that really sucks. Okay, so I'm gonna discard that, discard that. Okay, but the point is, I'm very combo-oriented, and so literally every card I've played so far is just to thin my deck so that round one I can play my combo. Turn two, I deal air one round one. Turn two, I just pass, say, hey, whatever. Round three, then I get my combo again and go again. That's kind of the idea here. What is this? Boost an allied unit by two. He really likes boost in that unit, don't he? So I'm debating on when I want to go in on my combo because he could lock it. But I think I'm just going to go ahead and commit right now. So this is the gist. Aside from the dope animation from a freaking Draco turtle. So this dude, man, this unit, he has five... You can't see it, but he has five power and five armor. Armor takes damage for it before its health would take damage, right? Or its power. At the end of a turn, if it has armor, it gains one armor. Whenever it loses armor, it gains power for every armor it loses. I know this might not make sense, but the whole engine here is I have the Sval Blood Priest, which, at the end of your turn, damages the unit to its right by one, and then Sval Blood Priest boosts itself by two. Anyways... Wait, did you really just help me out there? Order ranged. Move Battering Ram to the melee row, then damage the highest enemy unit by three. Oh, okay, he just helped me out. Word, dude, appreciate that. So let me show you this, all right? I'm gonna play the Spallbird Priest. I'm gonna end my round. It's gonna reduce this by one armor, boost it by one because it lost one. Then it's gonna gain another armor because it ended with armor, and then he's gonna go by two. Ready? So you go, pop, 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 boom. And then you do this early enough and you just let this thing build and build. Uh-oh. So he, watch it, he's gonna move my Spallbird. Oh, wait. Okay, what's move? Oh, move an allied unit. Okay, well that makes sense. Because he could have very well moved my own unit, so that's why I was confused. But he can't. Um, so we got that engine going and chugging. It's a beautiful thing. We love to see it. So now, we've got this going. We want to ideally win the round, but have more cards. And cards equals resources. I have to find a way that I can keep this going. Um... I'm probably just going to summon the Sval Blood Totem, so it's an artifact. But it says when it spawns, it summons two Sval Blood Fanatics. Listen to this. Dude, the animations and the sound design. Anyway, so I do that, and they their card reads Berserk 2, which means if they fall below to 2 health, something happens. And this just so happens... What did he just do? What was that? I wasn't paying attention. Okay, so we played a spell, or warfare. Split four damage randomly between all enemy units, increasing damage of one for each stage. Okay. So anyway, watch. He's going to damage these two units. Two units both to the side, which might sound dumb, but... They hit the threshold to then transform, and we get a huge power boost. You can see we're 34 to 25. Get freaking destroyed, bro. So that's looking real nice for us. Now I can... Damage ourselves again, give us more of a boost, and I get to bleed somebody for three. Okay, so that's a siege engine. That is also a siege engine. Um, trying to figure out which one I want to bleed. Which bleed just means each turn it has a stack, it'll just lose one health. So this is the gist of the deck. Damage ourselves, but in turn, damaging ourselves is giving us buffs and activating certain cards. Uh, which normally would be counterproductive, right? So he goes ahead and passes, which means he doesn't think that he's going to win this round. Now he does this now because he has four cards and I have three cards, which that means next round I'll be at a disadvantage. Which one card difference might not seem big, but it is. So I'm going to go ahead and pass. And normally he'd be like, alright, well, I'm a one-trick pony, that was it. But the deck is designed to then repeat this combo in the third round. Because I'm probably not going to draw everything I need in the second round. And I'll show you what I'm talking about here. I'm going to make a, an interesting play that you might not agree with. But you'll see why I'm doing it here in a second. I do not want that in my hand. Don't really want that in my hand either. But it's not the worst thing I've ever seen. But I'm going to get rid of it anyway. Okay. 
We're actually pretty close to our combo. We're not quite there, but here is an interesting move. Okay, look. I just pass. I'm I'm giving him the round. But the reason we're doing this is because it puts us back at a card like neutral. Our, our resources are the same. He'll have the same amount of cards as me. Then we head into the last round. I draw three more, and that should give me my combo to run again. See what I'm saying here? I know, big brand. I figured this out. Um, so that's some of the mind games. It's like sometimes you want to throw round one and win round two, three. Sometimes your deck is a, a one and a three. All this kind of stuff. Play a warfare card from your deck. Oh, I guess he's thinning his deck out too, huh? Although maybe he could have just, eh, whatever. I don't know, maybe he's combo oriented too. But as you can see, I only have eight cards left. He has 17. I've thinned my deck relatively well. So now we're going to draw three more. Last round. Pray to God I can win. That is not what we need. That is certainly not what we need. And that is fudge. We're one card away. Actually, wait, no. I think I'm good regardless. I want to shuffle you back in. And I get to shuffle one more person. You. We missed the one card I would like to see, which is Freya's Blessing. Or Helmer on Crate. Bit of a mouthful, I know. Um, but the good, the good thing, too, is... Giving away round two means round three, we go second. Going second is always better because you can react to your... You'll always be reacting to your enemy rather than them having to play the first card. Not knowing what's going to happen. Uh, so he's doing the exact same thing he did before. I... I'm debating on when I want to activate the engine because, again, slight problem is... He could end my engine early, but I don't know how likely that is. So instead, I'm going to summon Ceres Ancrate. I have no idea how to say that. And when I do that, summon the Drum and Queen's Guard. Cool, great. We love to see that. By the way, I chose this faction. There's different factions because Vikings. I saw it was a Viking faction. I immediately clicked it. I haven't tried anyone else yet. I'm a simple guy. I'm a simple guy. Not to mention, each faction has different powers that can dictate how your deck is going to work. So over here, I have this Blaze of Glory that has one charge. And you'll see what that does later in this game, because I'm going to use it in this third round. But I only get to use it once the entire game. So I got to make sure when I do it, very purposeful. So this is uh, damage uh, unit by one order, damage an enemy unit by two. What is the order? Oh, okay, so that's what he'll be able to do if I don't kill that soon. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and use my ability because I don't like this thing chilling out here in the back. So I banish something from my deck. I get to deal its power to an enemy. But then this guy specifically reads, if he is moved to the graveyard this turn, I summon him. And that's exactly what I did. Now, I'm going to use Raging Bear. Let me show you. Hit this for two. End turn. I forgot to use the ability because I'm a detriment. Okay, hopefully he doesn't kill that. If he does... Actually, I think he's going to kill that. Okay, that's a really big misplay by me. Oh, but that's good. Oh, that's real good. Okay. Because now he won't have that to use. I'm trying to make sure he uses all of the removal before I play my... my my main draw, you know what I'm saying? Um, I don't really like that, but I don't think there's going to be any way. Okay, so what I meant to do is, when this goes below 3 health, I can use it and summon a copy of it. Like that. Um, I know I'm just doing a fantastic job at explaining all this. Honestly, it's what can I say? I'm a natural. But like I said, there's a lot to do, and like the time's already ticking. You know, I, I, I don't have a lot of time to tell you what's going on here, so I'm going to play this guy. He plays down 3 skulls. Each turn, I can deal 1 damage to an allied unit. If I destroy these, they deal two damage to an enemy unit. You see, that's like the synergy there. Or, next turn, I can damage Queen's Guard for one, and then summon another Queen's Guard, and then just continue to summon Queen's Guards. See, there's a lot of combo pieces here. What did he just... Okay, see ya. Pieces. What did he do? Okay. Uh, damage unit by one. Charge one. Ah, oh, Jesus. Okay, but... But we're living. We're big chilling. Okay, so watch this. I'm gonna damage her. Summon another. 
And then I get to do that every turn unless he's able to stop that. So, good luck with that, bud. Now, here comes the biggest part of the deck. With gold cards, you can only include one in each deck. So I'm going to use that to revive Draco Turtle from our discard, play him back in the battlefield, and then our engine goes again because I have another Sval Blood Priest I saved. Then we have that engine going. So right now, he's got a lot he's got to deal with. And I'm feeling pretty good about it. Okay, but he's got a lot of these things. And I don't I don't like these things. Okay, so he destroyed that Queen's Guard. Okay, that's totally fine. Because check this. Damage that one. And summon another. I'm getting a lot of value out of this right now. Holy heckers. Okay. Now, while he's distracted by that, he's like, oh my god, he's doing this again. That's right. Now we got the Draco Turtle Priest engine going. This deck's so much fun, man. And that's why, so you'll see all my cards are animated, right? Yeah, well, so that costs money. Like, normally cards are just neutral, which is what I realized. I was like, what the heck? But like I told you, the, the reason I wanted to play was I love the animated. So, I'm not ashamed to say that, yes, I am. Um, ah, fudge, there goes the priest. But that's okay, because we're actually still big chilling. Um, I, I honestly don't see how we lose this at this rate. We still have... A lot to play. Um, now check this out too. So I'll play this. Damage him for two. Apply three bleed. So in three turns that ballist is dead. Tell you what. It's a nice combo deck but it's reactive. Even if the priest engine goes down. Like there's other stuff to do. This game makes me feel big brain. Which if any game can do that. It makes me feel better. Go ahead and boost your allies. He might boost the one I made bleed. <clears throat> yep. Okay, so it won't die now. But we're reducing that boost he has. Totally fine by me. Um, because yeah, an ability trigger me. Cards of the can be. So it might only be able to do that once. But I can't. I, I don't really know how that works. Doesn't matter. Um. Funnily enough. I could destroy it, but I don't think that's the play right now. Instead, I'm going to continue the Queen's Guard. Look at this value we got going on right now. I am going to play this veteran, which damages himself. But if I get him down to two health, he heals himself back up to eight. So if I wanted to damage him, it would be good. And right now, there's no point on hanging on to <clears throat> resources. Because this is the last round. If you don't use it, it's not going to work. So instead... Oh, look at that! He gave up! Yeah, so instead... You want to use some cards that... Your, your better, more reactive cards you want to save, like these cards. So I was saving those to see what the enemy would do. And just like that, you can give someone GG. And if you do, you get some rewards. He GG'd me, I GG'd him. You can see... I'm insane, and I can only hope that some of that made sense to you. Probably didn't. That's the tough thing about a lot of these games that I enjoy, too. It, it, it's not... Like, an FPS is easy to explain, you know? It's like, alright, I'm gonna shoot the dude. And you're like, ah, I get it. Card games is a little bit different, especially because you can't read each card. So I'm gonna do my best. I know some of you might be confused, but you can- you should always be able to tell when I make videos like this, though. My genuine excitement, you know? Like, I'm invested. This is fun. I like this a lot. Now, this starting hand could not really be worse. I'm actually going to replace you. Ah, oh, fudge. And replace you. Yikes. I might have to just thin this deck. Aye, aye, aye. Yeah, I... Hmm. This is going to be interesting. We're doing it live, I guess. Yikes. We have none of the pieces we want here. And I can't really just give up game one. Because if I go in all in game two, then I can't go all in game three. Like, you see what I'm saying? It's not guaranteed that I'll lose. But it just makes it more difficult. So at this point, our best bet is to thin our deck a little bit, make him use some resources, and then go from there. Oh, okay. Maybe he'll use some of his big boy stuff too here. 
I'm only going to be using pleb stuff. You know what I mean? So I'm going to actually start with Herald. And actually, I might be able to sustain this first game using that Queen's Guard engine we were just using. But I kind of didn't want to use that because if I play her in the melee, she actually spawns Shield Maidens instead. And when a Shield Maiden is damaged, it summons all Shield Maidens from my deck, and that's why I just shuffled both of them back in. So we can just pull those two from the deck, and so we won't be drawing those. I don't know. I guess we'll see. I just don't know how far I can get without having uh, Draco Turtle, because he's a big he's a big staple. He's not like the only staple, but. He's, um, he's nice to have. And we don't even have, like, if I at least had the totem, I could, I'd feel better about it, but. So he's just spawning dwarves up the butt, which is fine. But now I have to decide. Do I want to just go the distance with the queen's guards? It's a little bit dice here. Or I can just come. Because I got two discard here. That would get two out of my deck. Hmm. I think I'm going to try the Queen's Guard. I don't know. That was honestly a lot of fun. So I damaged it one. So as long as it survives until next turn, we're good. I guess I have to hope it does. Otherwise, yikes. We didn't get that going, and I didn't thin my deck. So... Yeah, I guess... In I guess in that case, maybe it was, maybe not my best play. What's he doing? He's damaging an enemy unit. Okay, it looks like he can't kill me. Okay, he's boosting one of his dudes, which is actually perfectly fine. So, I'm going to spawn a copy. And then I will damage that one next turn because right now it's inconsequential because it has to... I think it has to wait, right? Cards with order- Yeah, cannot be used for one turn. Okay, yeah. So I'll wait a second. Instead, I'll destroy one of these guys. Do some damage. I have one, two, three, four- I think I have enough. I'm gonna play her, draw two, discard two. Thin the deck. That's what we're doing. Oh, that's good. That's good. Okay. But there's a lot of stuff here I can't- Okay. I will get rid of fudge of you and you. I don't know if that was the play. Ooh. But the problem too is if, if time runs out, it doesn't play a random card for you. It just burns a random card. So you lose a turn and you might lose a card you wanted. So in that regards, it's very interesting. Oh, okay, so he's trying to kill this, which is fair. Um, I, too, would want to kill that. So, now I'm trying to think. Okay, so that's, that's probably going to die. Let's be real. Um, I can draw another card. And discard another card. Seems pretty good. Okay. Um, so, we, we drew a shield maiden. That's fine. Let's get rid of that. Again, thinning the deck. What it's about. We're down to 12, so the odds between round 2 and 3 getting what we need is better. And actually, I'm, fe I'm feeling decent about this one. As long as this guy can maybe get one more Queen's Guard off, I feel like we will have gotten... No! Never mind, it's dead. Wait, wait, what, is, what does his ability do? Spawn an elven deadeye in an allied row. What does that do? I don't know, but the fact that he didn't just... I mean, yeah, maybe he's like, well, I get more power removal off of this, but in the long terms, this... Listen, listen, guys. I'm not going to complain. Okay, it worked out in my favor, so I shouldn't have to. Shouldn't have to defend why we like that. I'm going to spawn this fella here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Seems pretty good, right? Yeah. Stars are all the 
So now, damage him three more times and he'll heal up to eight. So now I can play cards that would normally damage my teammates. And right now, maybe that's not the best. Although, really, it's good anyway. But that way, regardless, I can heal him up to eight. If so, it'll be a big buff. You know, he'll be like, whoop. Oh. Oh, please tell me he just forfeited. Just quit. Disconnected. Like the coward he is. Okay, he didn't quit. What the fudge? That's anticlimactic. Really thought he would have just given up. You hate to see it. Oh my god, I never realized. Top right and bottom right, it actually shows you how many cards are in your hand. Derp, derp, derp. Okay, well he didn't disconnect, but now I just don't know what's happening. The game like Bort. Oh, no it's not. Boost an allied unit. Wait. Oh my god, wait, what? If there are no other units on that row. Oh. Well, that's a pretty big swing. What is his original power? Fudge. I guess I could have stopped him from continuously buffing up earlier if I just realized that. Fudge. Okay. Fear not, my friends. Because the Queen's God continue. Now, here comes the best play. So I'm going to discard this from my deck. Normally when you play this, it loses 6 health. But because of its raw stats, and I'm circumventing that, we get 12 free damage. So I'm just going to bop hit you for 12. Now we are way ahead. And then, I'm going to damage you. And make him bleed so the likelihood that he can stay boosted is even lower. So right now he's at his regular health, so as long as he doesn't go up to 5, he's not going to be up in his power every end of the turn. And meanwhile, look at the value we've gotten out of these Queen's Guards. And he passes, which is great, because I didn't have to use any of these, which are pretty big. Yeah, we managed to win that round without what I thought were staples. I did have to use my ability there. Which is a bit unfortunate, but I think we can make it up. I think we're still okay. But I think the fact that he can't continue to grow that, he was just like, alright, well, screw it. Okay, so... 7 out of 10 here. Don't actually... Well, I don't need you. And... What bronze cards would I want from in here? Nothing, really. Okay, so... Don't want you either? Because normally you, you want that card to resurrect um, a priest. The Svalblood priest, when you... Because normally you have that engine running with the Draco Turtle. So then the turn, round three, whatever, when you need to reactivate it, you just... Get them all. Get, get those back. Uh, however, we're feeling pretty good. I've got everything I need, which means... I'm feeling more confident. Yeah. I'm more confident heading into the last round with my full combo. And on top of that, we'll have a one card advantage. Actually, wait, no. He doesn't have to even use a card, though, because he has his ability. Oh. Let's see if he sees that. I would assume he does. You guys can't see it. But he gets three charges to essentially just spawn a three power elf token. Oh. But he doesn't. Um, so... Oh, but that's pretty good. So he just gets to spawn some... Or buff something for next round anyway. Okay, so not a lot lost on his part. But we still are up one card. And as long as we can find the Draco Turtle... Oh, gosh, gotta be, you gotta be kidding me, right? Okay, so we do not want you. I will take that. What about everything else? Oh, wait a minute. I probably... I probably don't even need you. Yeah, I don't need you anymore. Although I could get the Herald Hound Snout again. That is not bad. What else could I draw? Yeah, I think that's fine. I won't use my last mulligan. Here we go! 
It's it's always a little dicey. We won round one, great, but can we do it again round three? I essentially always forfeit round two. Seems like it's always the best play, at least with this deck. I played um, a Bloodthirst deck that was still Skellies or whatever, the, the Viking people, before, and it wasn't just like auto pass certain turns. Okay, but see, he really likes this guy. And it's where he gets all of his stuff from. But actually, okay. I'll show you a dope little maneuver we're going to do later. So don't even worry about it. And here's the best part. I get to play Draco Turtle early. Normally I wouldn't. But even if he kills it, I have Sig Sig Sigurd Drifas, right? And I'll grab him back. Normally I don't want to play him in fear that we're going to lose him, but... We're good to go, which means I can try and get my engine going as soon as possible. And that's obviously important. We'll pay man back for the He's not even boosting that. Interesting. Um, because the more turns I'm able to do it, like the better. I don't want to put Draco Turtle and the Priest down as my last two cards, because the amount of value you get out of them buffing each other is next to nothing. So like I said, I'll just go ahead and play my Priest engine. It's up to him. And best part, I have another Priest too. So the likelihood of them sticking on the board is pretty good. I'm telling you. Big brain over here. Making me feel so smart. Meanwhile, you all at home are most like, like, Mr. Fruit, I'm glad you're having fun, but I don't get it. It's free to play. Try it out yourself if you want, or, you know, just watch me ramble. But just know I'm having fun. Ironically, the most time I've been playing... Wait, what is this? Damage an enemy unit by the amount Sheldon is boosted. Oh. Okay, that's only four. He wasn't able to take care of it. Little does he know, that doesn't matter to us. Okay, so we're going to draw and discard. That's so good. Okay, so now I get to discard this guy. He summons back to the grave. And now I got Freya's blessing back. So in the event that he does kill both Fall Blood Priests, guess what? We bring him back. This is looking good. He doesn't realize it, but as far as I'm going, this is about as good as it can get. Rowdy Dwarf in this row. What the fudge does that mean? Bonded? Spawn two Rowdy Dwarves in this row? What does any of that mean? Okay. Whoa. Oh, he's using all of his tokens. Oh. He's going all in. Makes sense. It's his last turn. So, trigger this ability if you control a copy of this card. Okay, he didn't. So, okay, Rowdy Dwarf is just this two mana. God, the animations and stuff are just so sick, though. Like, listen to this. <laughs> Sick, right? Okay. Uh, anyway. A little distracted here. I am going to play this here. This will be a big power boost next turn. See, he just blew his whole load, too, and little does he know that power bonus ain't going to do much for him. Unless he's got something where it all combines or he sacrifices for Exodia or something. Yeah, I don't know. Or maybe... Depending on how many elves he has in play, which would be only three. It seems he's all like dwarfs, except for... I don't know. I don't really get how that works. Damage an enemy unit by four. Damage four enemy units by one. Okay, that's fine. Okay, he choose, chooses to just hit everybody. Which actually is wasted, because now those guys are going to evolve and... And all that damage is negated. So I actually did two damage. Not very big brain of you, my friend. But that's okay. I'll forgive you. Now what we want to do. I think I'm just going to get another priest buffing up here. And they're all just going to be buffing each other. So now that hurts that. that, that but, 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 but. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. And look at that. We've got a card advantage with three power advantage. And I got a lot more waiting. Actually, maybe not. Uh oh. He has Geralt. No! What do you need? So Geralt can all obviously be a very good removal card. And he's like, yes, I. Wait a second, it's right back. That's right, baby! I was gonna say. Um, if he didn't actually have a way to kill these, then I'm kind of sitting on two dead cards, but that's not the case anymore. And 
<sighs> now I wonder what to do, what to do. So we can damage an ally for two. So we can hit our dragon for even more. Which honestly feels pretty good. So we're going to do that. And then buff everybody back up. We'll get that. We're getting what? Three, one, two, four. Yeah, four damage every turn. Just racking up from those guys. Boost adjacent units by two. Boost all other units. Oh. I see what he's doing now. That's why he put them all right there. So that's a big buff. But uh, spoilers, buddy. I got two more cards than you here. Um, not to mention... Oof. Do I just do it to him now? Kind of feels mean, though. I don't know if I just do it now. You know what I'm saying? Okay. I don't actually know how this works. So let me see how this interacts. I don't know if spawning him is going to hurt him. It does. Fudge. I could have put it right there. I didn't realize, though. But we're still ahead by seven. So he has to not only play seven power here. To just tie it. But he has to play enough because, spoilers, this is the cool combo. I play this guy. Oh, yeah. <gasps> oh, wait, that's like literally the exact amount he needs. Oh, wait, no, it's not. Okay, watch this. I'm going to do it now anyway. Spawn him in the melee. I get a banish unit. So we discard this with our ability, put it in the discard, do 12 damage. Then we banish it with this guy. Then get to do that 12 damage again. And as you guessed it, we won. I'm just going to go ahead and BM him, hit him with that. Ba -ba. 75 to 46. Your boy did it. Not even close. He blew his load, but my load was bigger. Why couldn't I figure out a way to phrase that a little better? There we go. Feels good. We won both of the games. I didn't suck for you guys. Even though I'm sure you guys are just like, yeah, what did he do? Are we... Oh, we're cl That was good? Yeah. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is Gwent. Odds are it's super niche. I'm probably just going to do a one-off because it's just not going to fit on the channel. But your boy's having fun. So I'll at least continue playing in my free time because I lost my train of thought earlier. But recently, the most games I've been playing is this. Legends of Runeterra, which is the League of Legends card game. Uh, Slay the Spire, which is a card game roguelike. Monster Train, which is a card, card game roguelike. Uh, Hearthstone, I feel like there was like some other card game. I don't know. I'm just playing a bunch of card games right now. It's nice. I, I, don't, I don't know. Anyway, I want to thank you all very much for watching. Those that did watch this, make it through most of it. I appreciate you. With that said, have yourselves a fantastic day. I'll talk to you in the next one. Farewell.